Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a cooking video of quick sauce, semi-homemade. We're going to take a jar of Bertoli sauce, which I really like, some Italian diced tomatoes, that's a 15 ounce can, one pouch of Hunt's um, tomato paste, I really like this, I got it at the Dollar Tree. Then we're going to use some crushed garlic, Italian seasoning, garlic powder, and onion minced. I'm also going to use a couple of bay leaves. These are dry. And then we're going to use some remnants of peppers that we're going to make stuffed peppers. We're going to use just a little bit of pepper. I'll tell you in a minute how much, as well as some chopped onion. And again, I'll tell you in a little bit as much. Um, we're also going to cook a package of, this is a 19 ounce package of mild Italian sausage. And we're also going to use the meatball recipe that we made um, last week on the channel. I'll link in the video video in the description box down below. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the the sausage in the oven. Excuse me. And while the sausage is in the oven baking, we're going to prep our vegetables. Now, you guys know, although I didn't call this a cooking with limitations video, when I do big meals like this, usually it's stuff that I can do while I can sit down from time to time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to chop some onion. So I wanted to just show you guys, this onion had started to go bad. And it was, um, actually, I think we bought them this way, to be fair. Um, but um, you don't have to throw out the whole onion because you have a rotten spot. Um, and that's really what I'm showing you here. And as actually, I was showing Jimmy, too. So what I did was I cut off all of the molded sections, um, all of the rotten sections. And there was really, oh, three quarters of the onion was really good. Um, so I just want to make sure I got every last bit. I peeled it. Um, and then once I had it... Um, peeled I didn't put it back on the cutting board with the with the yuckiness I put it on the other side um, and then I'm going to do the same thing with this other half of the onion and you can see there at the top where it started to rot and actually has a little bit of mold um, so we're just going to cut that all off make sure we have all of the gross sections right and then we're going to wash our knife and our cutting board um, just with a tiny bit of bleach or Clorox cleaner and, and water just make sure you rinse it off really well um, and what we're doing now is we're disinfecting all of the mold spores that could possibly be on our board left over all right yeah just getting all the last bits on there um, and then I'm going to clean off my board um, just do that a little bit thoroughly so you guys can see as well as my knife and um, I made sure that he you know did uh, the one side of the rag will just water so I could rinse it off when I'm done. All right, and we've chopped not, we've chopped onions plenty of times before. You want to go um, a horizontal with the board, and then um, you want to go uh, and, and slice a couple of slices through, and then go perpendicular down across uh, from where you're going to slice. And then the final chop is the, um, the straight edge chop that will make all of that little tiny diced bits of onion. Now you want it to be anywhere from a half a cup to a quarter cup of onions. That is a personal preference of how much vegetables you like in your sauce. Um, some people don't like any vegetables, so um, if you if that's the case, then you might want to grate your onion um, or grate your pepper so that they basically blend into the sauce. Or another option, you can take a stick blender or a food processor and you can um, just beat your sauce after it's all um, done together, but then that takes away from it being quick and easy. So we really we call this a semi homemade sauce because We're doctoring up um, Some jar sauce when some extra peppers. I mean some extra tomatoes um, And it is in less than a half an hour even though the video is about 12 minutes The entire process is less than a half an hour actually about the time that it took us to roast the sausage um, I like to roast my sausage in the oven first um, and then to create my sauce. Um, but really the longest part of this whole process is prepping the vegetables, to be honest with you. Um, and when you can do this sitting down, it really does take um, some pressure off if you have mobility issues. You don't have to stand at the stove the whole time or stand at the counter the whole time. So I like to prep everything and I'll cut all my vegetables into a bowl. Um, so what I did was I had some onions left over, I mean some peppers left over from um, a recipe the other day, um, and I need half of each pepper to do stuffed peppers coming in a couple of days. 
Um, so what I'm doing is I'm taking just a little bit of what's left and I'm chopping it up. Um, but you want it to be, again, a roughly a half a cup to a full cup of chopped peppers. Um, normally when my pop always made sauce, it always had green peppers in it. Um, but I didn't have any green peppers and that's fine. It's not the end of the world. He's done plenty of times where he hasn't had um, green pepper um, as well. He just, you just really can tell. <laughs> So if you've never worked with um, peppers before, when we were doing the stuffed peppers, we cut them long ways from top to bottom. And then um, you want to remove the ribs and all of the seeds. Um, the ribs are sort of like, uh, I don't know if it would be almost like if it was orange, it would be like the, the, the pith of the orange that goes between the two slices. <laughs> all right. And then we take the pieces that we have left over and we're going to chop them. Um, again, depending on how much vegetables you want to taste, um, will depend on how big you want to chop them. The finer the chopped vegetable, the more it'll dissolve in your sauce and it will seem a little less more vegetable-y. But I like that chunky vegetable feel because it makes it feel like it's homemade. All right. And that's kind of what makes it semi-homemade to me. All right. So in a mixing bowl, I have the onion and all of the pepper. And again, um, my vegetables are pretty much, I think I have a cup of each vegetable in here. All right. And now I've got um, some mini mixing bowls. I got these from the Dollar Tree, I think, last year or the year before. And we're going to do mise en place, which is basically prepping all of your um, food and seasonings in bowls, ready to go, just like on a cooking show. And the reason we want to do this again is because of uh, if I'm not feeling well and I'm having a day with limited mobility or a day when I have a lot to do, what I'll do is I'll conserve my energy the best I can. So by bringing all of my spices to the table in a bowl, um, you know, in the mixing bowl, then it's easier for me to go ahead and distribute them. I can measure them here while I'm sitting down and um, that just makes it that much easier. So we're taking the equivalent of three cloves of garlic um, and a tablespoon of Italian blended seasoning, which makes it easy. You don't have to worry about extra oregano or extra basil. Just use that. And then I've added uh, two teaspoons of, of garlic powder. Um, we always like to have fresh garlic as well as garlic powder, and it gives different levels of flavor. The jar sauce that we're using is actually already a uh, basil flavored sauce, so that's okay. This is just gonna enhance those flavors as well, plus season the tomatoes. You know what? I think we're gonna add a teaspoon of basil as well as a teaspoon of oregano just to shush it up a little bit, okay? Because I'm gonna add tomato paste, so that's what's gonna make it a little bit different. So after about uh, 10 minutes, I've taken the sausage out, turned them over. Actually, this is 20 minutes. Um, and then I'm going to turn them over and roast them just for 10 more minutes on the other side. Uh, we like that little bit of brown goodness that gets on the bottom of the foil. That's like my favorite part. Okay. And then we're going to set the timer again for 10 more minutes. And then continue to roast them while we start our sauce. So our sauce is very simple. On a high pan, I mean a, a pot, excuse me, on high, we're going to lay some olive oil down in there. Olive oil is my um, oil of choice because of its flavor. But you just want a tiny bit to coat the bottom and to brown your vegetables. And again, we're not really browning them. Um, we're just going to give them a tiny bit of translucency. <laughs> we're going to give them a tiny bit of, we're going to sweat them. That's the technical term. So basically you're gonna cook them just enough so that some moisture comes out. So how do we sweat our vegetables? Yep, we're gonna salt them. Now we're going to add a jar sauce, which is salted already, so be careful monitoring your salt. You wanna be careful how much salt you put in if you use the jar sauce. Um, but the tomatoes, the canned tomatoes, won't have any sauce in them or very, very little. And the tomato paste usually doesn't have any sauce in it or very, very little. So um, you just want to add a little bit to your peppers and onions, which what that does is it draws the, draws the moisture out and helps them sweat a little bit better. And you just want to let them go until, they, like I said, they start to get a little soft with a tiny bit of color on it. And this is only two times speed. Um, again, I've just done it for video purposes. So you sit here and watch sauce cook. Um, 
but so I think all total it's probably three or four minutes and that also will depend on the bottom of your pot um, okay if you have a pot that's wider and the vegetables are in one layer that will cook a little faster than if your pot is narrower and your vegetables are a little like two layers of vegetables if that makes any sense all right so what I've done is I've added the seasonings. You want to have some of the seasonings go cook down. We never, my dad always said don't put the black pepper in yet because sometimes that can tend to burn and add that, like a little bit bitter flavored. Black pepper always goes in the end. Um, but this is where we're gonna add the tomato paste and then just cook down the tomato paste. And we're gonna add the garlic and just cook down the garlic just for a minute, not even actually, probably like 45 seconds. Then we add the seasonings and then the whole tomato, not the whole tomatoes, but the can of tomatoes. Again, these are diced tomatoes, Italian style diced tomatoes from Aldi. Um, and then we're gonna add our jar of sauce. We're gonna use the whole jar of sauce, add about a half a jar of water. I like to do it in two quarters, exactly, so I can get all the goodness out of the jar. And then um, I do that twice. And that, that what that does is just adds a little bit of moisture um, that you can always, cook out if, if you don't like your sauce that thin but you can add more if you like your sauce thinner depending on the application so this sauce we're going to make um, we made meatballs we roasting sausage so we're going to end up putting meatballs and sausage in this that's what we're going to have for dinner however before that we're going to reserve some of the sauce because we're making stuffed peppers and we're going to need a little bit for our stuffed peppers okay so now that the sausages are done, pull them out. And the reason we um, do this, again, these have roasted as long as the um, sauce has been cooking. Um, the reason we do this is because the sausage will add some flavor to the sauce. Actually, the sausage has been roasting as long as we've been prepping, not as long as the sauce has been cooking. Because the sauce is mixed with the jar sauce that does have a tiny bit of sugar in it, you don't have to cook it down as much to get and don't add sh any more sugar to it especially if you're a diabetic it's perfect the way it is all right and then we like just to throw the sausage in there and then when the meatballs are done we'll throw the meatballs in there and then that will enhance it people always say do you call it sauce or gravy my dad always taught me if it doesn't have meat in it it's sauce if it has meat in it it's gravy makes sense because when you make gravy you make it with meat what can i tell you all right or protein i don't know so now we're going to add the meatballs that we fried up. Now these meatballs, when you fry them, you want to fry them. If you're going to put them in your sauce, you don't have to finish cooking them on the frying pan. You can finish cooking them in the sauce, but that's optional. Um, we did. We went ahead and we cooked some of them all the way because we were serving them separate for for a keto day. And that's it. I know. To serve it with pasta, your favorite pasta, or just. Grab some Italian bread and make a sandwich. <laughs> so I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. Anybody you know might be interested in making a semi-homemade sauce, quick and easy dinner. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out the meatball uh, tutorial if you haven't yet, as well as stay tuned for the stuffed peppers tutorial coming soon. And don't forget to stop by the vlog channel. We've got lots of fun things going on over there. The link for it is in the video box down below or the description box down below the video. <laughs> and as always, you take care, God bless, and see you next time. Bye.